Hello everybody. <clears throat> so welcome to today's class which is going to be showing you how to draw the figure um, from, obviously we have to draw from a photograph because we're not drawing from life, but um, I'm going to give you a few little tips about how to draw the figure and how to kind of like release a little bit of the nervousness about attacking a piece of paper with your pencil. Um, and start to make beautiful lines. So um, I'm going to show you now, I mean, I've never really done this before, so it's all very new to me, but um, we'll see how we go. So first of all, bear with me, because I'm my own cameraman, director, makeup artist, um, and stylist, and um, I'm doing it all. So there might be a bit bits when I'm kind of um, flummoxing through it, but you gotta bear with me. All right, so first of all, we do need to have a source material to draw from. So I've, I've got this magazine and, um, you know, scanning through it to try and find, here we go, I found this draw, this sort of image here. Um, it's ideal because it's naked, which is always good to start with. It doesn't have to be naked, but it's quite good to start with if you can find a naked um, figure. And... Um, uh, well, let's just tear this out, because to be honest with you, it's going to be so much easier to draw from it. Put that over there. So, we've got a figure. Now, we've got to, first of all, we've got to do is to look at the figure. Um, and this is what you do in, even in a real life situation. You look at the figure and um, you're trying to work out in your head where all the position. This head is going in this direction, which is actually following her arm, if you can see that. So the whole sort of energy is going down here. And then the body itself is going in another direction. So it's coming forward. As the body is coming forward, that's going backwards. So we have these lovely sort of energy lines. We also look, this is a key thing when we're looking at a drawing, as we look at sort of things like the shoulders. So this shoulder, you can't see it, but it would be higher than this shoulder, slightly higher. Yeah, and if we put our pencil across the breast line, you'll notice that this side is, you see the pencil is moving down towards us. So there's another line there. So it's going similar to that line down to the breast line. As soon as we get to the waist, it starts to change. The whole body tilts in another direction. And then when it comes to the hips, it's, it's quite exaggerated. So these are our kind of like key lines to look at. Okay, so you're looking at that point in relationship to that point, that point in relationship to that, that in relationship to that, that's an easy one, and of course the shoulders, but we can't see because the head's there. And then as the body comes down, we look where the leg's coming in, and we look at um, the plumb line. A plumb line normally goes from the ear here, and it skims the breast, skims the fingers, and just comes to the crook of her leg down there. So this would be the plumb line. Everything we draw is this side of that line or that side of that line, okay? And when I start drawing, you'll see that. So first of all, um, I just want us to, um, with our piece of paper, is to just come to familiarize ourselves with this figure, is to just very quickly draw you know, very just shapes and like, you know, that line, remember I said that shoulder's higher than that, you can see that. Um, there's a line that comes through here, which is her, um, which is her back of her coming into the waist. We can actually, here's the ear, we can actually do a plumb line so we can actually see this plumb line coming down the body. So we're gonna have the waist coming to about here and then we've got the, the body sort of bowing a little bit and then of course this leg bows out and then comes back in whatever comes out by the way always comes back in so and then this is a very relaxed leg here 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 will be our knees so obviously we want to make sure the knees are at an angle that knee is slightly higher than that actually so we need to make sure when we're drawing our knees that actually this is coming in in that way um, so we've got the waist is doing that, the breast is doing that, say so these are the two, the two breast plates here, and then the hip is even further, yep. So you have this kind of almost like a S shape coming down, there's a sort of energy really coming down, and I love that, and I love that energy there. So you can see that, and then this arm um, is going to be coming back to her waist, so the hand comes back to her waist, can you see that? 
when you come out, you look, where does the hand come back? It comes back right where the crook of the waist is before the buttock. So we know that that comes back to that point. So when we're drawing our hand, where did we come back? Well, it's going to come here, isn't it? So when we come out, we know that it's going to come back in to this point here. So just familiarise yourself with, you know, where the hands come in relationship to everything. And... Um, you've got your kind of lovely sort of fluid lines of um, what is going on. Obviously her eyes are going down like this. So straight away we've, we've just done a very, very quick sketch of that little pose there. So we're kind of familiar now, okay? So we should all be relaxed with that one. Using your big fat pen, scribble away as much as you like. Draw it as many times as you like in that fashion. Now, what we're going to do now, and this is an old Rud Rudolf Steiner technique, is that um, we're all frightened of this lovely piece of paper. Um, and rightly so, it's rather beautiful. We should be using recycled paper, by the way, but never mind, we'll talk about that in the next class. Um, but it's kind of this white piece of paper, always very frightening. Oh my God, what am I going to do? Is it going to be a mess? So Rudolf Steiner went, before his kids used to do maths in their classes, he used to get the children to paint all over their piece of paper and they'll all colour it in, be creative, cut off the corners because we don't like corners. They're rather hard and, and negative. We like the roundness. That's what he used to say. And um, so the kids were like had fun with the piece of paper before they actually engaged in being cre um, being mathematical. So they were using and in, in engaging in two sides of the brain, the, the creative side and the sort of logical, theoretical side. So straight away, you've got an intimacy with what you're doing. Right, so we're going to, what we're going to do to, to just make a bloody great big mark on our piece of paper first is like, let, we're going to do a silhouette shadowy type figure of this okay which is our just a, a instinctual raw reaction to what we're looking at now you can use um ink um wash like i'm using or you can use a bit of um charcoal chalk um pastel but if you do you use the long side of it not the pointy side so you're making big marks big shapes not little spindly ones all right so here we go i'm going to do the head where i think it might be always like to stick the old ear in um, as a reference point and um, just kind of using my paintbrush and my wash these breasts might go round about here um, so we're just kind of enjoying dragging ourselves through this painting um, we're not really thinking about where the tones are on the body we're just getting a silhouette um, of the shape of the body um, because we're going to use our line as a as a to define it all can't see the feet on this it's difficult for me to, to draw it though of course I can make up feet but uh, I like to draw what I see um, so we're again this leg is coming out behind just below the calf so we know that that's coming over here um, so to speak and then um, we've got our lovely oh god I didn't plan this very well we're going off the page but never you mind and we're coming back to this point remember I said we're coming back to the waist with the arm so the arm is um, coming back where the hand is going to be now she's a little bit kind of looks a little bit plump there but we'll probably rectify that in the drawing and then she has got this arm here, which of course actually could be, um, anyway, that's the other hand coming down. We could modify that. So remember that whatever comes out is going to come back. We need to make sure that she can stand the stand up. So we've got this rather lovely sort of smushy, wishy, um, lovely kind of inky, inky type of drawing at the moment, which is just a silhouette. OK, it's just a silhouette and I want you almost to forget about that now. I want you to really focus on the line because we're going to reanalyze this. We're going to re go in with another piece, another piece of material. Now, we can go in with a pencil like I did the original um, drawing with. Um, we can go in with that or we can go in because I just happen to have this. Now, to be honest with you, if ever you ever go to Venice, please, whatever you do, buy one of these. It was four euros, can you believe that? 
I think it was on the Rialto Bridge, the most expensive place to buy anything in Venice, but you could buy these amazing pens. And they have the most amazing quills on tip, the nib, nibs on them. And they're so cheap. I should have bought loads, actually. I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, um, this is my go-to piece of equipment. I always keep it in the box. I like keeping prices on everything so I know how much things cost me. But um, I love making a line with this. It's such a beautiful pen. It's lovely to hold. If I drop it, though, of course, completely ruined. Well, anyway, so, so far, so good. I haven't dropped it. And I'm going to use ink. Indian ink but if you haven't got dip pen and ink or if you have got some ink and you've got a piece of old like bamboo like from a rush matting always nice to dip that in and then draw with that too it makes a fantastic line or you just go back to your trusty old pencil um, or, or even a felt tip pen but you know pencils lovely because it gives you such a gorgeous line graphite pencil right then so um, we are now going to um, add our line. So we have to get into a different mindset here because we're no longer looking at this shape. We're going to be looking back at our source material. Um, and of course, if you were drawing from life, you'll be referring back to the model. Um, and we're going to, oh, you know, I always start at the ear. Don't ask me why. I start at the ear because Let's face it, when you think about it, where is the most painful pa place when you've got a sore, you know, when you have a massage? It's always your neck and your shoulders, because all the tension is kept in your neck and your shoulders. So um, that is where the tension is. That is where the energy all uh, sort of congregates. And so that is where I think it's a good place to start. And also, remember, it's in our lovely drop line, our central line. Remember, it's coming down from that ear. Anyway, so... We'll start at the ear and um oops, I need a bit more ink on that. Um and I'm gonna make a sort of ear shape again, looking at what I'm looking at, and um the neck and the jawline. Alright? That's always a good place for me to start. We all have different places that we like to start, by the way. Um I don't touch the face yet. And then we're going to come and look at what is going on uh, um, with the figure and just drag our line down, okay? Um, so back, like I told you, we're gonna come back into the waistline um, and uh, because that is where she's pushing into as this figure. So, um, I probably wish I hadn't let it dry so much because it's nice when it kind of bleeds as well. Um, so we're kind of lo looking about where all these these points start, and we know that that point starts just beyond where her arm meets her torso. Um, the and again, remember, we're not following what we've done because you might find that that was wrong and that you might need to do it. Um, re-look at it. So we're constantly looking back at our at our original source material or if this was a model we'd be looking at the model because you know you're meant to be looking at the model a lot more than you're meant to be looking at your piece of paper. Um, right so the, 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 the body comes just at that point here and she has got a lovely little tummy but not as big as I originally made it. So again I'm kind of re- analyzing, reassessing as I'm moving down this figure. Um, hands, I know they're always difficult, but do not leave them out, even if you're gonna make a complete holix of them, because nothing looks worse than a figure without, um, a life drawing without hands on them. So just have a go at them. The more you draw, obviously the more, the more that, you know, confident you are going to be um, at drawing everything and then I could give you a lesson in how to draw hands but that's a completely different lesson we're not going to do that today we're just going to um, focus on trying to get this figure in proportion to itself okay not the best hand I've ever drawn but never mind I've got a little kind of what's it going off here but oh, there we go um, we're not going to criticize too much um, as we move through this drawing now her bum comes out from her wrist. This whole hand's wrong, actually. Never mind. I think that probably needs to be like that. Um, anyway, so we got again. I think it comes in sooner than I had originally anticipated, and then it comes through 
to here and I always like to give a little bit of a we like a little bit of an, a knee um, and then the leg is going to come down here um, just kind of enjoy dragging your you know your your a piece of whatever your you know pencil or whatever just dragging it through the page and don't worry i mean i think this is the problem we all kind of go mm, i can't draw i can't do this can't do that but you know it's just everything is just kind of just enjoy it really um we all know by the way um well not that we all know at all but i'm just saying the um the knees again if we put our little uh, um pointer this knee's slightly higher than that knee so when we are doing our knee we've got to make sure like we did with the hips and the waist and everything else that it's in line again it's got that you know that angle that's going on here can you see that um so uh let's go back to this let's just put this back leg in i'm not going to put the feet in because to be honest with you oh, I, I can't see them, so I'd <laughs> be lying slightly. Um, and then we've got this distant arm coming in as well, which might be quite nice to um, get that in. Um, at, well, it's got a little. And uh, sometimes, you know, less is more. You don't have to do the whole thing. Um, so you've got your, your your line in. So we kind of like, again, we didn't necessarily stay within the lines. We reanalyzed that that went out there. I reanalyzed that. The shoulder was a little lower. The breast was much higher. Um, these have completely changed from my original silhouette. So don't be a slave to that original silhouette. It's only there to give you confidence and to help you realize your line. So we, now, just get into the face, um, put my pen, my precious pen down. Um, you know, if we look at the top of her eyebrow, it runs parallel to the top of her ear. Okay, if I did a little line like that, it runs parallel to the top of her ear. And the bottom of her ear runs parallel just below bottom of the just below the eye okay but the top the most important one is that top one so we know that where the angle is going to be on this face because we've already done remember we've already done the ear my most important part and of course we know we love to hang earrings off those too so i'm just going to change the angle slightly so you can see what i'm doing on the old face um but um we kind of almost got there now we've done her mouth and the other eye is just kind of oops need a bit more ink it's just kind of poking through that side of the body and um oh we need to just probably put in some hair now um to give it you know a little bit of a realistic feel to it um, oops. As I said, guys, I'm doing this all myself. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, obviously a few technical problems, but nothing we can't live without. So, you know, just a bit of hair in there. And I think once this is dried as well, we can add a little bit more tone to it. Um, yeah make it a little bit more anyway there we go um so we can um then when i think this is actually dried a little bit you know if you want to go back in and i know that um, my ink will be activated because it's not um you know i'm going to activate that line a tiny bit but it is quite nice because you can kind of bring a little bit of sort of shading back into it without being too prescriptive about the whole thing so just kind of have a little bit of fun with your material and um you know just kind of enjoy it you know it's it's, it's here to be enjoyed not not to be frightened of and that's really what i was trying to kind of show you a little bit today that you know it's it, it's just a little bit of a trick to have this sort of silhouette so I'm just going to go in with all the little dark areas, really. 
this sort of silhouette first, it just takes the anxiety away a little bit and it kind of makes you feel like you're not working on this perfectly white piece of paper. So it's kind of got a nice feel to it. And I just want to show you one more thing. Just hold on, I'm going to move the camera around. So just hold on a minute. So basically I just wanted to get back to just thinking about the figure Okay, we've done this figure. I think I've artist license. She's coming forward a bit more because I kind of like the whole idea of her coming forward. We're allowed to do that a little bit. But also, I just wanted us to think about proportion. So very quickly, a little quick thing to check whether your proportions in is right. And you can do this before you start as well by measuring the head is that you measure the head. Now, that's my measurement from the top of the head to just under the chin. All right. And then I go down the body. So one two, three, four, five, six, seven, and pretty much eight is down here, maybe eight and a half actually. Um, so I've got eight heads to my body, eight and a half heads to my body because I haven't got the feet on, but you meant to have about eight. Now if you wanted to do, you know, like I said, a fashion drawing, um, you might want to add another head, nine, because you want it to be long and silky. But if you wanted it to be realistic, in proportion to itself, whether they've got a long body or a short body, they're always going to have about eight heads to their body. So if we kind of just did a really rough kind of check here, can you, can you see this um, top of her head there? So I've got this mark here, which is the si roughly the size of her head. I mean, we're being very rough here, and I'm going to measure that. So it's one, two, oops, it is. I'm just imagine that being two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight is down by the bottom there. So we've got eight heads to that body. Now I'm sure if I measured the real body um, as well, because I can't really do it properly because we haven't got the legs on this particular photograph. That's one head, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably just under probably seven and a half this one actually if her legs came down here so seven and a half to eight but eight is the golden rule and nine if you want to make it a big long eagle on gated um, fashion illustration all right well that's my little class for today oh my dear you came off the stand and um and that i will um be look i've got a dress on i haven't worn a dress for ages <laughs> um and I hope you're all hibernating and cocooning yourselves and isolating yourselves and, and having a creative time. And I look forward to seeing you all when this is all over. So lots of love and speak to you later. Bye.